through every step, step by step, and show you exactly how I do it and give you some suggestions and tips and hints for a ways that you can do it. Um, possibly making the kit a little bit easier. This kit <clears throat> is going to be, um, again, a Make It With Me series. This is part one, and we hope that you'll stick with us through them all because there'll be a lot of great information, a lot of great tips and tricks to help your finished stocking come out just as beautiful as possible. And again, this kit is available. It'll be linked in the description if you want to purchase the kit and make it right along with me. Let's get started. To the next series. Um, video a series of videos let's say uh, for this new project we're going to start and oh gosh for me there's nothing more exciting than opening a new kit starting a new project and this is the kit that has been requested um, this is a special order from uh, from a lady who's requested this to be made um, this is called sleigh ride with santa it is an 18 inch Bucilla stocking kit. Um, and the good news is, is that this possibly might be a great kit for a beginner because when I go through and I look at uh, the number of pieces, it looks like we're at about 107 or 108. So it's a fairly moderate number of pieces. So let me show you how I begin. First of all, you've got to open it up. And then I start by setting up my box. I have taken all of the floss and sorted it into my floss sorter. And you can see that I put my, I have a number of needles. These are the embroidery needles. These are the bead needles. I highly recommend that for efficiency. That way you thread up a needle, like for instance, if I thread up a needle with this light blue and I'm using it as a bead needle, I put it right here, leave the blue thread in it when I'm finished, whatever's left, and I can just pick it up when I need that color. Same with all the others. Um, really makes that whole process uh, so much quicker. When I first started, oh my goodness, I used the two needles that they ca that came in the kit, and I threaded and unthreaded. Um, of course, my eyes were better back then, and my hands were better, so it was easier to do that. But uh, no, not anymore. Then I have my nice, this is this is my uh, bin. If you want links to any of these um, particular items that are in uh, it, this bin or, for instance, the floss sorter here, um, all those links will be in the description um, for this video. So no worries about that, my glasses. Um, I always keep a bag of stuffing. I keep a little bag of... Um, pipe cleaners or chenille, chenille um, sticks. Uh, some of the kits call for those, some don't. Um, and then I have all of these containers with my sequins in it. And that's where I'm at right now, is getting ready to open up and put my sequins in their containers. Now, this is probably my favorite container system. It is these two inch screw on lid clear containers. I have some of these with the black lids. I don't like those as much because I can't see what's inside without picking it up. Um, and then I realized that sometimes I've got gold sequins and sometimes I've got yellow and that just by glancing at them it's hard to tell which is which. So I do put a label on the top of my um, containers if they are something that I think I might get confused on. I like this uh, system because it comes that uh, 12 of these uh, two inch containers fit inside a box so it keeps them from doing this rolling all over my um, my box here. So then the white ones and the clear beads I have in these larger containers. These I got from Michaels years ago. Um, I don't even know if they sell them anymore, but there's an R on them and a heart, and it says 
TM, so that's some kind of trademark. So I, I'm not sure. I know folks have asked, and I just, I just don't, don't know where you can get them anymore. Um, so these are what I have gone to, and then I also have my Magic Thread Thread Conditional. You'll see me use this quite a bit. Um, it does keep the floss from tangling and fraying, and um, it does really help to um, keep your floss gliding smoothly as opposed to um, hanging up sometimes, which it can do. And uh, now here I have, let's look at this a little closer if I don't make you sick. Here are the two needles that come with the kit. You can see those. It's hard to see them. Here, let me take them out of the plastic. This one has a purple dots on it. That's that one. It already looks like it's bent, my goodness, and I haven't even used it. I do bend needles occasionally because I pull on them rather hard. And here is the other needle. It is a blue. It's got blue on it. And if I put the two needles together, you can see that one is longer and one is thinner or narrower. And this longer, narrower one, that is your bead needle. So that I'm gonna to add to my side over here with bead needles. And this one that's already bent, um, I'll try it, I'll add it to the embroidery needle side, but it may be, it may not, it may not last, it may get, relegated to the trash if it continues to bend. So uh, there's that. And then I just cut open each of my sequin and bead containers. Well, there's more needles. Oh, look, this one comes with stars, gold stars. It is always fun to have something extra and different. And so I will start a new little container to hold the gold stars. Um, this is great, they're in a Ziploc. It keeps them all together and nice, but um, having to open that Ziploc and get down inside of it each time you need a star is not really um, as easy as it might seem. Uh, I like to just stick my finger in and pick stuff up that I need. So there are the gold stars in their own separate little container. And now the other thing I have is I see that I have a color, which I'm not sure if it is. Oh look, they gave me another needle that's not bent. That was nice. I wonder where the bent one went, but when I find it, I know I can throw it away because I've got a replacement. So what I need to do is look at my chart here and this chart happens to be on the back of the picture they do that sometimes but not always and they tell me what color my sequins are and i see that they're calling these sequins yellow so i'm going to make sure that i put these sequins in my yellow container i have yellow and gold and um, they're very very difficult to tell apart so I will just tell you that. And then here's blue. The blue ones can also be a challenge because um, they have so many different blues. See, here's, here's my container of blue. It looks like those are probably the same. Here's my other container of blue, and you can see, I don't know if I swirl it around, some are darker and brighter, some are lighter colored. Um, so the blues have been different in different um, kits. So what I usually do is combine, um, so these will go in here, become part of that mishmash of blues in there that I use and then the blues that are for this kit I'm going to use the clear container and I'll put them in there so I can see that they are for this kit 
Now, I also have this great pair of scissors, and I highly, highly recommend. These are Ginger embroidery scissors with large handles. You see those there? Large handled scissors. Again, links to these things in my description. Um, they are very helpful because my fingers don't get squeezed down inside and the handles don't don't rub and and uh, sometimes they can really make a big dent in your hand so this is probably the trickiest part of the whole kit is trying to get your sequins all into their right container and don't be surprised if in your package there's some wrong colored sequins. That happens a lot. So, there we go. That's the blues for this kit. And I will put them on top there. And there are very few white ones for this kit. That's surprising. Um, just to let you know when we get over to the beads here, that um, clear beads are used for all colors unless they're red or black. Red and black have their own beads, but everything else uses the clear beads. And I can see that this little packet of white, which is very few in this one, there's another white packet, has got a red one and a green one. And that is not uncommon. So I try to fish them out if I can. Sometimes it's much easier said than done. There's the red one. Ah, and it went back in and the white one stayed out. There we go. And I'll try to fish out this green one. Set them to the side until I get to the container when I'm filling those. There we go. And I'm going to go down to the other end here and just go ahead and dump this other section of white in there while we're at it. Now, these scissors, I get them sharpened frequently. Uh-oh, are these different? They look like they're the same. They're kind of a star white. Okay. They're kind of just very shiny compared to some of the others. Okay, so that's done. Now we've got this is yellow, they said, so we're gonna go with yellow. Um anyway about these scissors. Don't cut anything with them except your felt. I should not be cutting this plastic with them. I should use my just regular paper scissors um, because they do, you will find your work is so much easier if they are nice and sharp <clears throat> and they can be kept sharp. I know that here um, I can check on the schedule of my local Joann's store Joanne Fabric Store, and they have a monthly um, sharpening session where a gentleman comes in and brings all of his equipment and will sharpen your um, scissors if they're sharpenable. Um, so I do that a couple times a year usually and get all my scissors sharpened. I think um, last time I went, it seems like he charged me $14 and I had two pairs so um, $7 a pair which is well worth it when you are working on these things now I'm looking for my light green here again I I find a lot of pleasure in just doing this organization some people, I guess, would find it very tedious and wonder if it's worth it. But trust me, it is so worth it to have your stuff 
organized where you can find it. Gosh, my red one is getting pretty full. Get these two stray red ones in there. Like I said, I just add on top to the previous kits. I'm I'm doing uh, multiple kits, obviously a year. I only have one kit out and sorted and being worked on at a time, so that um, I don't confuse up the the sequins and the beads and stuff because some of them are. Uh, particular colors like I, I did a Mary Stockings one um, and it had pink and turquoise and um, kind of a, a lime green. They were some unique colors and I, I didn't want to um, confuse those with my standard colors, you know, the red, the green, the white, all those. So um, I always have just one kit sorted and active in my box at a time. And now here's brown. Let's see. Here's brown. I have brown and I have, oops, I have orange. They're pretty much the same, but not quite. So definitely don't want to mix those up. Oops. And I have a stray red out here that I didn't get. Go. And now the real Christmas green, not the light green. So um, you'll see on your uh, key, your chart that gives you all the details and the codes and stuff, um, your key chart that there are light green and regular green, just green, dark green, I guess they call them on this kit, um, sequins. So you have to pay attention to what color they're calling for on a particular piece. There we go. Whoa. And that's one thing about sequins is they can really be staticky when they come out of that plastic bag that they could have been in for quite some time. So uh, they sometimes can kind of cling. Okay, so that's all of that trash. Now we're going to move to the beads, which in this kit we have just clear and red. So I'll start with the red. And then all the rest are going to go into my clear beads here. Oh, I see a blue sequin got, st <coughs> got stuck in there. <coughs> Excuse me. Hmm. I did not get those cut open. Okay. Got to cut it down farther. Okay. Now, let's see. There we go. Much easier. Let's see if I can fish that blue one out. Yep. And let me put him in with the special blues. Okay, we are sorted and ready to get started. So, I highly recommend that you look over your uh, this chart, this key chart, and just try to get a general understanding of 
what colors of floss there are, what kinds of stitches, and then this gives you uh, details on how to do each individual stitch. I will go through that with you as we come to each stitch that they're asking for. Then I recommend, um, and it's it can be tedious, I, I don't do it anymore, but I recommend getting an idea of um, the general instructions. If this is your first time, you definitely need to read the general instructions. It talks to you about how to sort floss and how to separate it and exactly what they're talking about. And then all of your instructions here, they come and have a little uh, box to tick when it's finished. And you'll notice that I keep my pencil and this um, all clipped together so that I can check things off. I noticed on the last stocking that I made, it was very strange, that they never said to cut anything out. <laughs> so the first step when they're talking about a piece and what to do with it is always to cut it out. So step one, stocking front. Refer to the design chart and color symbol guide for the floss and sequin colors. So your color symbol guide is this and your design chart is here. And this is where it's going to uh, give you the codes that you need for knowing what stitch to do and when, okay? So, it says, embroider, personalize, and sequin the stocking front. Note that there are several colors of sequins used on the stocking front. So the stocking front is almost always number one. So we're going to look for that. I believe this stocking is, is blue. I, I kind of refer to this. Yeah, it's blue. I like to refer to my uh, photo to tell me what color is it exactly that I'm looking for because you've got kind of a stack of colors. So I'm going to get, whoops, I'm going to get my box out of the way here. And I get all this clipped together like so. Because the first thing we're going to do right now is we're going to cut out piece number one, which is our stocking front. So I'll get that out of the way. put my glasses on and we'll talk about how to cut Bucilla felt. Okay, this piece, um, I don't, see, I think the number must be this right here. It's kind of smudged down here, but this is number one. It's the stocking front. So the first thing that I do when I'm ready to cut is I like to find a place where I'm kind of, where the lines are kind of close to the edge of the fabric where I can cut. So I'm going to use my good scissors and I'm going to cut just on the inside of that painted line. So just on the inside all and this one is going to be a long cut because it is going to be all the way around the stocking and if you should come back and find a little bit of the white line still left on your piece just trim that away or uh, the other option for getting rid of unwanted uh, paint, which we'll call this paint, um, is just to kind of um, scratch it with your scissors or with um, a needle or a pin or anything. But see, I'm just going to cut this away. There we go. And I'm going to keep going all the way around and being very careful and slow and trying to have a really nice smooth cut because um, this will be the edge of the stocking that will be um, seen obviously so 
You want to just work slow and carefully and as smoothly as you can. And you see we're getting here to where we've got some details. Looks like this must be a reindeer leg and hoof here. That's one of the things that I think make these stockings so beautiful and so interesting is they're not afraid to go outside the lines, so to speak, outside of the shape of the stocking and to let some pieces um, kind of be on the outside of that. And I think that really adds to the interest factor. Don't be afraid to um, handle your felt. It's going to get a lot of handling. And it can take it most of the time. And then another thing before you start, I have to get this cut out. And before you start um, putting things on it, you may choose, depending on how uh, the felt is, you may choose to uh, iron it a bit, always putting the paint down. Don't uh, iron onto the paint. And putting a cloth, a thin cloth, between the iron and the felt to take out some of these um, folds that have been, depending on how long your felt has been inside the kit, um, some of it can get very creased and uh, be a challenge to work with if that crease is, is in the way. Um, it's not very often that I find that I need to do that with the front of the stocking. I do it more often with the back or with some of the pieces. Um, sometimes there'll be a crease right in the center or not centered in a piece and it just won't lay right for you and it's hard to cut. So um, in that case, just uh, open, go ahead and take it to your your ironing board and uh, again paint side down and a press cloth between the felt and your iron and you want to use as low a temperature as possible um, to get that fold out. Um, so I always start with my iron real low and uh, if that doesn't work then I just bump it up a little bit and try again. There are some paint dots, for instance, right here. You can see that on the outside of your cutting line. So just ignore it and keep cutting. It is not needed. All right, I think I fixed the focus, so I apologize if it was a bit blurry there. And uh, a little pointer on smooth and even cutting is you can see that I've got my hands um, on the cloth or on the felt and I'm actually giving it a little bit of, of tension 
and that helps uh, cutting to be a little bit more smooth and um, even. There it is. It's all cut out. So now we go back to our directions. And I just work one direction at a time. So it says it wants us to embroider, personalize, and sequin the stocking front. Now, I don't have a name. Um, I don't know if this stocking is potentially going to uh, a child that maybe is not born yet or is um, anticipated or not but they have not given me a name so I cannot do that at this point but I will tell you that I purchase um, these name packet or not name these letter pouch pouches from Mary stockings um, I'll have that link also but it's marystockings.com and they are felt letters. They have been um, laser cut. So that makes them very nice um, and easy to work with. I'll show you, I've got a package open here. Here's some red letters. You can see all the letters. And I've obviously used some, so I, I keep my packets. Um, so I have red, green, and white. That's what they come in. And it's real easy to just snip these letters away. There's just a few threads that hold them in there. Snip those away and then position them on the top of the stocking um, and get them all nice and just, just perfect um, the way you want them. But if you're in a scenario like I am where you don't have a name yet, and frequently that's what I do because many of the stockings I'm making um, are not ordered. They're just available for sale once they're finished. So um, I can do the same thing with the letters um, after the stocking is finished. So not to worry there. But let's see, what other embroidery do they want on this stocking here? Okay, I see that up here we're going to have diamond shaped. Diamond shaped. Oops, where are those? Are white sequins. The diamond shapes are white. Okay, so all along this top border here is going to be white sequins, but I will tell you this right at the get-go. Do all of your embroidery and your stitching before you start working on the sequins. Sequins is in the sequence is going to be always last because the sequins will catch on the threads of what you're trying to do and um, really can become irritating. So, you know, let's just wait and let's do the other things first and then do the sequins. So I see this white kind of a kind of a white straight stitch. Okay, it's see. So this kind of oval is going to match this kind of oval here for just a straight stitch and it tells us that we need two strands of the white floss and we're going to do that straight stitch in all of these places you can see them here for all of these kind of sparkly things and then we've got dots and those dots are going to be just sequins so you can see here, oh, oh, let's see, how do we tell? Be oops, sorry, because some of these, when you look, and if you have a question, go to the picture. So I see that there are white sequins and beads with some uh, straight stitching behind them, but I also see these gold stars. So how do they tell us 
What is a gold star? Here's a star. Okay, is a circle with a, a star inside of it. So, this is going to be the gold star. So, we've got white sequins up here, but everything that is, doesn't have the, the um, white stitching, straight stitching around it, every other dot here is going to be that special gold star that we had. Here they are, these gold stars on just the dots. And they look like they go on just like a sequin, but we're going to be using the clear beads for those. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do are these straight stitches. And it looks like we also have some um, we have some white straight stitching here and here. <laughs> And we have some little over here on the, the smoke coming out of the chimney. We have some little V's, it looks like. Looks like these. And that's going to be two strands of the white. And that's an outline stitch instead of the straight stitch. So that looks like most of the embroidery that we are going to do on the stocking. Um, before we start with any sequins. Okay. So let's talk about embroidery. Uh, we're going to take a, a st one strand of the white embroidery floss, and it says that we need to use a two strands for this uh, stitches that we're going to be using this white for. So you can see here that, and there's some diagrams on the instructions, that the floss separates into, there should be six strands. So we're going to take one strand off, and you should be able to hang on to it and pull carefully and gently. There we go. And then I put these other five strands back. onto my floss sorter. This is going real slow right now. Trust me, we will not continue this slowly throughout the rest. And now we need to get out our thread conditioner. And this is just a little tub of clear wax. There's no color in it except for the all the threads that I've pulled through it. And you just slide it across the top and it can go down like that. And this puts just a very small amount of clear wax on the outside edge of your thread. And that helps to not only strengthen the thread, but to um, prohibit some of the tangling that you might get. Now I can thread embroidery needles, but I have to use a thread, a needle threader for those bead needles. The eyes of the bead needles are very small because they have to go through the beads. Oops, now I'm, don't do what I just did, that's wrong. Cut that knot off. Now, as you can see, I did only one strand and it calls for two. So I'm going to bring the ends together to create a double strand. And this way, it makes this needle that I've threaded uh, very versatile. I also like to always keep the little ends trimmed. And now I can begin. And I usually just pick a place. Um, I might be down here. And I'll do probably most of the straight stitches. Um, I do caution dragging your um, threads too far. If you're going to be dragging a thread, say if I go here on this smoke here, and I'll do this 
little star and then I can come up here and do this smoke. That's not too far, but now when I finish there, where do I have next to go? Here or here? That's too far, so I will tie off because what can happen is down inside the stocking it can get pulled or even on the front it can get pulled. So we want to be cautious and um, tie off when necessary so that you don't have a lot of um, long threads going through. Um, I do line the stockings that I make, so that helps to keep anything like that from happening, from those threads being pulled, but um, it, it's something just to be aware of. So, all right, I've got my two strands, and I think I will start at the top, because the top is a good place to start, and we will work on these stars. And it's just a straight stitch, so it's just just like that. And you can go in and out like I'm doing, or you can go um, up and down with a, uh, you know, come up and then go back down, and then come up and then go back down. Okay, and that's one star. Now that will get a white sequin and a bead in the center, but there is nowhere for me to go that is close. Down here or here is really too far to go, so I'm going to go ahead and knot off my yarn here, or my floss I should say. So I'm just going to go under those threads and make a knot. You do have to be careful, but you don't want to make your knot, uh, you don't want to pull or become uh, too tight on the front. So, Trim it off and keep going till I get all of these stars done. And then I'll be back and I'll show you what they look like. Okay, uh, the stars are finished. And I'm just checking the code. Yes, these are the straight stitch. Okay. And they are with two strands of white. Yes. Okay. Good. I've done it correctly. You can see here that I did the first push. And I've done the stars. I think I've found them all. I always give it kind of a pull back and look and double check to see if I missed any. Not that you can't go back and pick them up, but you certainly could. Um, but so now we're ready to work on this little tree. So I've brought the two ends of my single strand of floss together and we'll tie those into a knot to create a two strand floss. Oops. Um, I do that because it makes my um, it makes this needle more versatile. If I need to sew down applique a white uh, piece, I just tie the knot in a single end and leave the strand single. If I need to do embroidery, um, I can pull the two together and I have a double strand. So that's just my own personal 
way of doing it. So let me show you this straight stitch on at least one of these. So I'm going to come up right on the center line, this center line that I'm working on here. And I use my stitches about a quarter of an inch. So I'm going to go in and out. And there's my first stitch right there. Now I'm going to go back in right where that stitch uh, ended, that first stitch ended, and come out about a quarter of an inch or so further down past where I my last stitch came out. And this is creating a, see a stitch here. Now I'm going to go down in where my last stitch ended and come up about a quarter of an inch down from there. And just keep repeating that. And when I'm finished here with this one branch, now these little small, small little sprigs that are going to come out from the main branch. And I'm just going to do that in a single, just one in and out stitch. And then I'm going to take this one over here and do the same thing in and out. And then there's one right here I can pick up and go back down. And now I'll work on this next branch. See? And I'll work my way up to the top of this branch here, like I did on the previous stalk. So I'm going to go down where my last stitch ended and come up just a little ways past. where the thread came out. And that finishes it, so I'm going to do that little branch there, right there, and then do this little branch on this side here and do this branch on this side and this last one on this side And now I'll come back and do the rest of this tree and I'll show you when it's done. See, here's this one tree is done. And this one's almost done. Then we'll come back over here and I'll show you the outline stitch. Thanks for joining us for part one of this series, A Sleigh Ride with Santa. Uh, make it along with me. Please join us next time for part two, and we'll continue to go step by step through making the stocking fully from beginning to finish and including stitching on the back and also lining the stocking. 
So I hope you have a very blessed day and I hope you join us again for part two.